Welcome to Strip Coverlet. I'm Adrian Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here with another entry in the George Saunders saga that we have been going down since February-ish? This has been on my Goodreads thing, because I do a Goodreads thing now that I never update. What's that? Uh, where you keep track of the books that you've read. What do you mean? You mean a piece of paper? Mm, pretty much. It's a uh, notebook. Never update it, though. And this has been sitting there driving me nuts. So we got to get through this. Has it been February? That, was it February that we started this? I could double check, but it's been a while. This is this is, this is is one of the final short stories in the collection. We've got four left, I think. We're going to get through it this month. Uh, I, I don't know why you still dislike Saunders, despite the fact that he is continually produced work that you enjoy. Did I say I disliked Saunders? Oh, I just need to get through it. I just need. No, that is my that is my fan and the exhaustion. See how southern I went when I got that fan going on me. Uh, but anyway, dolty, dolty, dolty. This is exhortation by George Saunders. Yes, yes. One of uh, our final stories in this collection. An interesting piece. It really is uh, different. Very different. Right. Uh, anyway, do we want to start with good and bad? Sure. Okay. Three good things. You got yours you want me to go? Uh, there is some good philosophy buried throughout this. Uh, the mystery of Room 6 is what draws you in. That's that science fiction, supernatural George Saunders pull. And this is the world's first interesting memo. Yeah. I wish uh, I could write a memo like this. Okay. Um, there's There are more memos in the world of George Saunders that maybe we'll get to eventually. Okay. Um, three good things. One, God damn you, Saunders. Again, sad and funny. Okay. And that's what he does. Two, the Room 6 mystery here is the right type of vague. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Number three... Honest to God literature derived from corporate America. I can I'll, agree with you. I'll be a motherfucker. I'll give you that one because right. my number six is very similar. Uh, Your number six. Yes, I number them one, two, three, four, five, six because one, two, three, one, two, three doesn't make sense in my world. Okay. Uh, so my first bad thing, which is number four, uh, we never get the answers that we want in this piece. Uh, you have no idea what's going on by the end of this. Where you have no idea if the specific... Oh, we, we, we can get it. Okay, okay. Uh, there's not as much humor here as you would find in a normal Saunders piece. It's there, but it's not as punchy in the face humor. I think that there are a lot of things... Oh, we'll get to it. Okay, we'll get to, we'll get to, to that. Uh, but we can agree, uh, this is the harsh realities of capitalism. This is make it or break it, do or die. Okay. See? We have agreements. We can do that every you know, time to time. Every four or five minutes. <laughs> I do have a quote. Oh, hold uh, on. I've got three bad. Excuse me. Three bad. Number one, you never really get a clear picture of any of the characters involved. True. Number two, uh, we never get a clear idea of the actual stakes at hand. Okay. And number three, the distance of corporate America lacks the pop associated with a payoff. Right? This, the, I, I, I think that the reason you don't find the humor and the reason that I didn't find the stakes in this is because of the distance associated with a memo format. Okay. Right? Uh, and we can get into that a little bit later. Okay. It's interesting, though. Yeah. Uh, I do have a quote. It is from 85 of this copy of 10th of December. <clears throat> we have embarked on a path, and having embarked on that path for the best of reasons, as we decided a year ago, wouldn't it be kind of suicidal to let our progress down that path be impeded by neurotic second-guessing? I like that. Yeah. If I don't use that in my work life at some point, I have failed as a human being. Right. Um, and my quote has to do maybe with why we're doing this now. Anyway, October is how Andy entered sort of, at least in my mind, de facto Hall of Fame and is pretty much henceforth excluded from any real close monitoring of his numbers, at least by me. No matter how disconsolate or sort of withdrawn he gets. And I think we've all noticed he's gotten pretty disconsolate and withdrawn since October. You will not find me closely monitoring his numbers, although, as for others, I cannot speak 
Others may be monitoring that troubling fall off in Andy's numbers, although really, I hope they're not. That would not be fair, and believe me, if I get wind of it, I will definitely let Andy know, and if Andy's too depressed to hear me, I'll call Janice at home. Look at that, corporate America. Yeah. At its finest. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting piece. And I said that this is the first uh, world's first interesting memo, and you said there are other George Saunders memos? I, if I'm, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that's interesting to me, because as a uh, written standpoint, this is different. Uh, this is technical writing, not something you usually see placed into a fictional world. Uh, the idea of the memo as the story. Right. So that is very interesting and unique as, you know, my reading experience uh, to Saunders. I'm sure somebody else has done something similar, letter writing and whatnot. Uh, but in the modern world, this is the first memo story that I've read. And that's what's really interesting about this is because it holds the cliche of the memo, you know, oh, the boss is doing a little joking, he's letting us know about our progress. But it also tells a story, which is very commendable, you know, for Saunders. It's well done. Right. Uh, but, not super crazy about this one. I think it's easy not to fall in love with, but I think that there are also a lot of things here that you have to acknowledge that are going on, right? That, okay. That, that mystery with Room 6, that really is there, isn't it? Yes. Uh, room 6 seems to be what is fueling this piece. Uh, the mystery of what happens in Room 6, what is Room 6? Uh, I'm... I think I'm comfortable not knowing. Well, the examples go from cleaning a shelf to getting rid of a dead whale to tearing things apart with a sledgehammer. Yes. So I think it's fairly obvious that whatever's happening in room six, it's really not good. No. Uh, and it strikes me almost in this sort of uh, dystopian future, um, brave new world okay. sort of way. Uh, you, you know, all these things going on in room six, what if what they're doing in there is they're scrambling your brain? Okay. You know? Uh, but there is that fear in, uh, not even just corporate America, but any job site. Uh, there is that one place that you don't want to end up. Yeah. Is here, that your office? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an office. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it seems that the stakes here are not just being fired. No. No, Just, there is something more sinister at work. Right. And it seems to be enveloped in the company as well. Like whatever happens in room 6 is probably transitioning you to another place in the in the in the operation. Oh yeah. Right. Like it seems like maybe you're going to room 6 in order to have your brain scrambled so now you're one of the people that we're doing experiments on. Something like that is sort of the feeling I get from it. Okay. Uh, but we we don't really have that many clues from which to work. No. Which I think makes it a good type of mystery. Yes. And that's the thing. I want to complain about not knowing about Room 6. I want to complain that we're not getting any answers from this piece. It's just a memo. But that's kind of the allure to it and kind of the beauty of it is it is mysterious. And if you're reading this as, let's say, somebody who's, this is the first memo they've received in the company, that's kind of how you're getting with this. Right. What the hell's Room 6? What's this about? Uh, so there is a hint of mystery here that is a comfortable mystery. Right. Uh, this does feel like a memo that you just received from work. So that is impressive, in my opinion, for Saunders. Um, and that's what I... You say there wasn't as much humor in there. I think that a, a good deal of the humor in this comes explicitly from the form it takes. Okay. Right? The fact that this is a memo makes makes a comment, doesn't okay. it? And it is sort of a jabbing comment that is barbed and funny. If I may, a little bit of humor here. What am I saying? Am I saying whistle while you work? Maybe I am. Let us consider lifting a heavy dead carcass such as a whale. Forget the shelf whale thing. We just have come back from our place on Reston Island where uh, there were, one, a lot of dirty shelves, and two, yes, believe it or not, an actual dead rotting whale, which Timmy and Vance and I got involved in with in terms of the cleanup. There's... A... Is it work humor? Is that what I'm going for here? I'm not sure, because inherent in that situation, we also get the humor that is saying, look, we were sent to a retreat. You're not. You're reading my memo while I go on retreats. Oh, yes, this is an right? important person. This definitely right. is. But he's trying. He, there's, there's this double speak. Uh, I'm not watching his numbers, and I don't think you should. 
And if you are... But he has had a massive drop-off. Okay. Right? Which insinuates I am watching his numbers. But I'm fucking lying to you, saying I'm not, because I want to be the good guy. But I'm too dumb to let you know, or that I do let you know, that I'm not actually the good guy. The American corporate ladder right. at work. You are, Beautiful. you are, what is it they say about retail? You are promoted until you're incapable. Right? Yeah? You're promoted. You sh- you're good at this, we'll move you up. You're good at this, we'll move you up. You're good at this, we'll move you up. You're not good at this, go ahead and leave. Okay, okay, right. I promoted, give you that one. You're, you're promoted until you break. Uh, but let's get back to room six, because I think that is the real mystery here. And we're talking about Andy, the man whose numbers are starting to go down in October. Uh, Andy did, in terms of tasks I give to do him in room six, being undone by his boohooing, are his numbers on the break room wall, miraculously strolling downward, and people suddenly walking out of room six feeling perfectly okay again. Well, we all know they are not. Noah's walking out of room six feeling perfectly okay. Even you guys... You who do what must be done in room six don't walk out feeling so super great. This harkens me to other Saunders. This harkens me to Escape from Spiderhead. Right. Which, spoiler, is my suggestion for this. (laughs) Uh, But that seems to be what's going on here. This weird corporate structure. And is it safe to say that maybe this memo is coming from the same company that is in Spiderhead? Is room six part of Spiderhead? Um, I don't know that we have any reason to interpret it that way, uh, but I have no reason not to. No reason not to. I'll, right. I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> I think that if you pair the stories, it is easier to see the comment that George Saunders is making on corporate America oh, yes, as this sort so. of shell uh, with no real being living inside. But having read Escape from Spiderhead and knowing how ridiculously dark George Saunders can get, uh, the concept of Room 6 is just chilling. With yes. no for notion of what it is. <clears throat> exactly. Where does Escape from Spiderhead fall in this set of short stories? Because I know Exhortation's pretty quick. It is directly before Escape yeah. from uh, Escape from Spiderhead, then Exhortation. Right. So I'm going to say that could be there. Well, well, it could be. And there is a reason that these short stories are set up in this way, aren't there? Yes. Uh, that's one thing we don't normally talk about on the channel because we don't necessarily have the context with which to do it, is that anytime you, f- you take a collection of short stories or a collection of poems, it's just like the chapters in a book. They flow the reason. way they do because of something. Someone has made that conscious effort. And here it is George Saunders. Why did he make the conscious effort to put Exhortation or uh, Escape from Spiderhead before Exhortation? To put you in the mindset of those darker aspects of the corporate world. Well, after you finish from Escape from, uh, after you finish Escape from Spiderhead, if you're still, you know, functioning as a person, because that one will ruin you. Right. Uh, you're dropped into this. Uh, nice warm-hearted memo from the boss that very subtly says, hey, if you're not doing your job, we'll just send you to room six. It's right. okay. Right. You can handle it. Um, how does this relate to something like Bartleby the Scribner? Do you mm. remember that short story? Yes. Bart- I, uh, I just bought a copy, actually, Bartleby? in a book haul about a month ago. Will you do this? No, thanks. Will you okay. do that? No, thanks. I think that it, this evolution of the workplace speaks a lot about America. Um, that a short story like that can once be appreciated for what it was, that there was always that guy at the workplace that was the drain, right? Okay. And in that short story, um, no matter where it took place, you could relate, right? And you could see, you could see Bartleby. And okay. you knew Bartleby. And Bartleby, despite the fact that he was worthless, you knew he was going to exist and he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be fired, right? Here, you'd better be meeting your numbers, or we will room six you. Yes. Right? Because in, in, in today's world, you are expendable. Absolutely so. No matter who you are, no matter where you Absolutely are. Absolutely so. You are um, expendable. And looking at it from a business standpoint, it's even more uh, apparent. I mean, neither of us work in like a hard business atmosphere, Uh, But no, if you aren't making your numbers, that's fine. There are others who will. Right. Uh, I like to think of myself as Bartleby at work. I am the Bartleby. (laughs) I'm also crossed with the guy from Airplane who just randomly jumps in. Have you seen Airplane, the film? 
It's been a long time. Uh, the guy who just randomly jumps scene for scene is like, yo, and Leon's getting larger. Because somebody comes up, they're like, Gentry, yeah. are you doing this today? Yeah. Nope, I'm playing on the computer. Yeah. That's what I do. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's... If I were putting a collection of short stories together, I would pair this with Bartleby the Scrivener. Okay, very uh, interesting. Because I think that they are two of the... There are two comments on the workplace that lead to very different places and say very distinct things about the atmosphere in which they were written. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Anything else you really want to hit on with uh, exhortation here? Um, Not off the top of my head. Okay. I, I think that this is a trip, and it's a trip because of the form. And there are things that we, we have to remember that form is one of our tools to decode things as a reader. Okay. Right? Uh, what this puts us in the mind of is we're that employee. Yes. Right? Because of the form. Yes. If this were written third person, it'd be we very would, different. We would not be we would not take as immediate an emotional investment. Uh like I said, I'm not crazy about this short story, but I do think it is a very interesting form, as you said. Uh and it is something to definitely check out. It's different than a typical short story that you just get uh dropped upon you. Right. Uh so definitely worth a read. It's <laughs> interesting to be placed in a position as a reader. Yeah, because who is the implied audience? It's you. Yes, uh, but as a reader, usually you're free to make your own judgment. But in this piece, this reads as, well, you're the employee, so what do you feel about this? Right. Uh, very interesting, very well done by Saunders. Uh, what would you rate this piece? I am going to fall in with line in line with everything I've said on any of these Saunders ever. The lowest I'm going to give it to 90. I give this 90 room sixes out of 100, yeah. What? I because I think that I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Mm. There are things in there that I have not decoded yet. There are things in there that I have not dug deep enough for. I don't care who you are, George. This is an eighty-one rotting whale corcuses. Corcuses? Corcuses. Not even a carcass. Corcuses. That's low, salty. Thank you. Thank you. I just uh, corcuses. When I get angry or flustered, I make up words, and corcus is the word of the day. So, what would you recommend? Uh, I recommend Escape from Spiderhead. I know. <laughs> I've already said this. I would actually recommend uh, Civil War Land and Bad Decline by George Saunders. Okay. Uh, That's is, not one I'm familiar with. Um, we'll get to it on the channel eventually, and I think that it will be very profitable for you as a reader of George Saunders at large. You realize that you have now read more George Saunders stories than F. Scott Fitzgerald. Probably than Hemingway. You don't have ten Hemingways under your belt, do you? Uh, I'd say I probably have ten Hemingways. Uh, we can list them out, but I doubt <clears> it. <throat> More than likely. Because w w once you get past the big ones that you have to read in college, there's like six or seven of them there. Yeah. There's not There's not even eight or nine. Uh, I also have read more George Saunders than, I would say, 99% of the population of Missouri. That's the 99 is being generous. Generous. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a 99 point in there, right? 99 point something. No one reads George Saunders, so... Yes. No one reads short stories anymore. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Which is, yeah, sad. And that's one of the things we're trying to bring some, some uh, attention to on the channel. Very much so. Uh, so if you like things like this, we are almost finished with the 10th of December. So make sure you hit a subscribe button down below. Uh, follow us through. Get through this collection with us. I'm hoping there's another gem in here. Much like Escape from Spiderhead or Simply Good Girl Diaries. I think there's there's one in particular that I'm not going to spoil for you. But I think that you're going to enjoy it very much. Good. And there's another one that I think you will find entertaining <laughs> tolerable funny but you, you i don't think you'll i think you'll treat it like this one where you don't necessarily see the literary value it's great but you read like shit dalton thank you very <laughs> much sir i appreciate well, that when you put it like that yeah absolutely uh make sure you follow us on twitter at strip cover and on facebook at strip cover lit